I'm just praying. That's praying. all I'm doing. Yeah. This is not tears from the pain. It's tears of joy for how far we've come as people. <laughs> Welcome to Wings with Wayne, the show where sovereignty gets spicy. I'm your host, Wayne Ducheneau. It's truly an honor, a privilege for me to welcome today Dallas Goldtooth to join us on the show. Dallas, welcome. For those of you that don't know him, Dallas is a comedian, he's an actor, he's an organizer, and most folks I think are going to know you from your hit television series on FX, Reservation Dogs. So Dallas, as we cheers to our first wing, tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you want the folks to know. Oh, creator, thank you for this sacred chicken here. I have to offer it four times. Are, are we eating? We're eating. Yep, we're cheers. Eating? Cheers. Right, hold on. Four you got to do it four times because you're because we're indigenous. Four. Four is a sacred number. All right. So our first is Seed Ranch Flavor Company's The Taco. Wait, that's the name of the flavoring? Yeah. Pickled jalapenos, green habanero, cilantro, lime, garlic, and hominy. All right. There's like an almond roasted mm. aroma to it. We've got a napkin for you here, too. We're gonna share the same napkin. No, no, you got a napkin there okay. too. Sorry, man. After. That's very good. Isn't that good? Nice mm -hmm. taste to it. It's lovely. And then our beverages, again, lactose-free milk, rose hip tea, water. Rose hip tea. I thought this was apple juice. I mean, the <laughs> Native Governance Center is going all out. Mm. The rose mm. hipped tea? Hipped. Tipped. We threw a tea in there to keep it fresh. Tipped. Yeah. The Native Governance Center doesn't have the rights to use a tribe called Red, so we're going to do it ourselves. Oomps, 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 oomps. Boots Boom. and cats, boots and cats, Boom. boots and cats, boots and cats. Boom. Boom. Yeah, that's racist, man. Okay, sorry, man. You don't be doing wolves. That was an owl. That was like, owl, owl. That was an owl? Yeah. No? That's messed up. Not so much. Okay. More about yourself. Tell us. Wait, what? What do you want folks to know about you and the wing? Tell me, tell us about it. <laughs> I'm gonna derail this freaking interview. My goal is to derail you as much as possible today. Okay. I'm ready, I'm ready. Um, I am a Taurus. Okay. I um, am a Saturn rising. I'm just making that up. I don't know my rising. Um, I was born, yeah, on the Lower Sioux Indian Reservation down in Southwest Minnesota, AKA so-called Minnesota, because this, we all know this is Dakota territory and land ever and always. But I also grew up on the Yankton Sioux Res out in so-called South Dakota, the Hunkdawan Territory. Yeah. My dad is Diné from Diné Territory, but I was raised Dakota, mm -hmm. proud and true Dakota. But this was a really good starting because yeah. it had no spice whatsoever. No spice whatsoever. It was tasty. Are you ready for hell raising sauce, which is triple inferno hot sauce, it says? Sure, it's already on there? It's on there, yeah. You know what, I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna, gonna I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go there You're gonna do and it? put a little extra. You're gonna ruin our prop? It's okay. Sorry. <laughs> Apologies for messing up your prop. This isn't even real, all right? This is just tinted water. I'm just kidding, no. Okay. All right, so we're gonna cheers again. Cheers. Um, and one of the things Dallas I wanted to ask you is, you're such a prolific com comedian. How and where did you get your start? And then tell us about your journey to Reservation Dogs. I'm processing that. Mm -hmm. I'm processing that. That um, got a little kick to it. Not mm -hmm. too bad. Not bad. One to ten, I'd say it's a two to three for me. Right Solid now. three, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I started doing comedy, I would say, almost 15, 20 years ago. 15 mm -hmm. years ago, I'd say. My brother, his name is Miggy Z. Pensano. He's a pretty prolific writer, producer. He's one of the producers on Reservation Dogs. Mm -hmm. His dream, uh, both of our dreams, always has always been to make movies. We've always wanted to tell stories. And he's from Red Lake, he's from Northern Minnesota. And um, so during, like, I think it was like during the summer break or something like that, I, I went to uh, go visit him. And I had this camera that I, uh, I basically stole from my job. <laughs> so I was, I was doing youth work on my res yeah. and we had a camera to tell like indigenous stories and we got wrote some grants, so, you know, but I borrowed it, borrowed it, took it up north to my brother and we're like, dude, I was like, hey man, let's just make, let's just do a video. Let's do a video together. And we made our first video, which was a parody uh, of Silence of the Lambs. And we call it the Buffalo Bill Redo. We made the video, we edited it in my dad's basement and we posted it on, on YouTube shared it out and people started watching it 
and it inspired me and my brother like let's just keep making videos so we started making stupid youtube videos yeah. that made us laugh and eventually we met some other content creators and we formed the comedy group 1491s with this idea let's just make content that makes us happy let's make content that makes our families laugh and just be good with that yeah. and that kind of evolved into people asking us to come do live shows and so that's where I got my comedy chops from, was just traveling, hitting the road, doing sketch comedy, improv comedy, in front of, all across Indian country. Mm -hmm. And that crew of guys, the 1491s, like we stayed like tight and close through all those years. And eventually Sterling Harjo, one of, the, one of our crew, got the show Reservation Dogs. And he was like, hey, I want to bring my bros onto this. So we're all writers on the show. People often ask us, hey, what are the 1491s gonna do another video? What are you guys doing now? We're like, dude, we are. you watch Reservation Dogs, like <laughs> we're all behind that. Like, yeah. There's all these Easter eggs. Like a lot of our original videos, there's a lot of concepts that are Easter eggs spread out throughout the show of people who've seen old 1491 show. Willie Jack, right? That's Willie a, Jack, that yeah. was one of, our, one of our characters that we created. Yeah, so, yeah for yeah. sure. My worst comedy show was in, in my own home community. Bombed, I bet. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> Oh, the worst show I've ever done. Like the biggest bomb is in my home community in Lower Sioux. And 12 people showed up, <laughs> 12. And then my mom was there. Yeah. But my mom didn't even come into the freaking show. She stayed on the outside smoking a cigarette, watching us through the window the entire time. Oh. It was a disaster of a show. And it's hilarious to say the worst show we've ever done was in my own home community. That's how it is, man. No one treats you better or worse than home, right? So, Which is a valuable lesson for those who aspire to be Native leaders. You should go to the Native Governance Center to learn more about how, what it takes to be an Indigenous leader in your own home community and the attributes you need to be successful. <laughs> All right. All right. So we're gonna jump into the third wing. This is uh, a hot sauce that is ghost pepper pineapple. Uh, but Dallas, so aside from your activism, aside from your acting, what other stuff do you work on and, and what, what are you excited about that you can share with us today? Here, cheers. Okay, cheers, cheers. Watch it. This is to the, it just says hot sauce, okay. All right, here we go. Taste right. the pineapple. The right note. off the bat. Notes of pineapple. Just coming into the raised trap. Catching up steam, okay. So you can taste the habanero. Mm -hmm. And now the heat is like, like, a, like it, you know how when someone runs past you and they fart, <laughs> you know they farted, but you don't smell it. I'm, it's the crop dust effect. I'm smelling the taste right oh. now. When you swallow though, I, I'm feeling the burn now. Yeah. Okay, so your question was about my stripping. Yes, it was. Um, how long has your OnlyFans been up and where can we find it? Well, <laughs> it's a foot fetish foot channel. Oh, okay, sorry. So. Um, it's Dakota Toes. Nice. Check it out on OnlyVans, Dakota Toes. Okay. Um, <laughs> don't look that up. <laughs> All right. It does not exist. And if it does, that's it's not my point. That's someone's going to go yeah. like, tag you on Twitter. Yeah, so this is Dallas with me. <laughs> Dakota Toes OnlyFans. Check them out. <laughs> it's like, I, I guess I, I like, I'm, I'm a multi hyphenate person. Like, I love dabbling in everything. Okay. I'm, I'm interested in, uh, in all things. I do bead work, I do quilt work. Yep. Actually, my mom and my dad were avid uh, quilt work artists. Uh, I also do quilting, I do sewing. So I made a couple star quilts. Cause like, it's just, there's not many native men out there who make star quilts. And like, I would do, I would totally tap into that. Like, sorry, I'm fucking drooling now. <laughs> Wayne Duchenneau has got me drooling. Um, I love traditional arts. Yep. I'm an avid supporter. I love all forms of traditional arts making, whether it's folks that are doing canoe building, right? Mm -hmm. Or they're building, building birch bark lodges. That does, I'm saying that because that's recently happening here in Minnesota. Yep. A lot of communities are, re, are building some of our original homes. And so I love that. I'm a bit of a gamer. You and I've experienced some of that. I'm Watch I've, us on Sovereignty Side Quest. Check out NGC social medias to find that. Yeah. So I do the gaming, I, I'm a writer, I'm an actor, and someday I'd like to do directing. I would love to run my own show someday. I want to do Dakota language teaching, so that's always been a passion of mine, of uh, Dakota language revitalization work, mm -hmm. so. Um, real quick though, I, if you don't mind resharing a story that we talked about on Sovereignty SideQuest, talk about your baby Starquill. Mm. And 
the yeah. interaction at the grocery store, I think. Yeah, right? so actually, so my mom uh, is a quilter, but she didn't actually, quilting has been a new thing for her, relatively new. Like she only started doing quilting in the past maybe 12 years, 15 years. And so my youngest child, well, uh, in the lead up to them being born, my mom came down to stay with us and I said, hey, can you teach me, I wanna learn, I wanna make a, a star quilt for my baby. And so my mom did one-on-one -on -one with me, like taught me how to make a star quilt from scratch and I did it myself and it was a little baby star quilt. And so? And no, it was, it was like, it was machine? on a machine. Okay. It was a, in a ho little home machine, so we didn't have a big like quilting machine. And I was super proud of it, I was super happy. And it was like, came out perfect. And then I was at the store like this. later on with a kid and we were like we were at the grocery store and there was this old old lady walking there she's like oh she saw the star quilt wrapped over the stroll and she's like oh it's so beautiful somebody's loved somebody's grandma just loved them so much and made them a star quilt and my wife was like no actually he made it and she was like and her face was like, what? <laughs> like, I, I, we almost gave this old woman an aneurysm. Oh, oh, what? Cannot compete. You, a man made this? And I was like, yeah, I made it. And she's like, and she literally, her brain shut down. I pictured Total Recall, I remember where. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was like. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, she comes out of this like suit. <laughs> What? <laughs> uh, yeah, so like, it was pretty cool. And my wife was like, yeah, my, she was really proud of me. She's like, yeah, my, she's like, I didn't have nothing to do with that. My, my husband made that. Um, and we actually brought it with us. It's like in the car, actually outside. All right. One of the things I want to ask you, and I think I'd be remiss if I didn't, is you've been a part about this, uh, it's not a resurgence, it's an insurgence of native narrative right, of native stories, of native people getting out in front of things. And I know because you have a particular passion towards tribal sovereignty as well, what are some good examples you're seeing about tribal sovereignty exercise and be grown and, or some other native narrative highlights that you wanna talk about? As we try, let's choose our fourth wing. This is the Phoenix uh, from Guadalupe, Mexico. Angry Goat Pepper Company. Hold on, do it again, because it looks kind of weird. You're like well, this. I guess you're like this the whole read. time. Read so it. this. There you go. This is the Phoenix from Guadalupe, Mexico, and the Angry Goat Pepper Company. Cheers. This is from Angry Goats from Angry Guadalupe, cheers. You're Mexico. You're making my arm look silly. Okay, okay, okay here we go. Cheers. All right, here we go. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Why you make me nervous about the breed? That why'd you do I, that? I gotta take a preparatory <laughs> breath. Psyching you up. Okay. Mmm. There's no spice right now. It's sweet. There's a sweetness to it. There's a good taste. Mmm. Kind of like a mango flavor, and then now here comes the spice. Oh, yep, now I'm getting the ash. Here's a, you could tell why it's a phoenix. That's actually pretty good. I would actually eat that on the regular. Yeah. Thank Wayne, you. have you ever wanted to do voice acting? And if you could, what kind of character would you do? I'd love to do a Star Wars animated show. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. What kind of voice would you like to be? Would you like to be an alien? Or would you be a fucking Empire spy? I think I would be a double agent Empire spy. Really? So can, you, I would, can you do a British accent? I can. Oh, but okay. Then you would suck. I would, well, but there were Midwestern uh, <laughs> English focused <laughs> broken Lakota spies in Star Wars, wasn't there? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Just imagine like a mid, a freaking an empire freaking agent for the Midwestern. Hey guys, how are you guys doing in here today? We're gonna have some torture now. Is that okay? All right. You betcha. Can I, can I make you a little bit comfortable? Do you want some, some something to drink? <laughs> What, what kind of uh, mispronunciations do you get about your last name? Oh my goodness, so about any way phonetically it could be said, it's Dutch and Ox. Dutch and Ox. It's a... Uh, Which is really fucking good. That's that's your fucking Star Wars name right, right now. Right. Oh. Dutch and Ox is here. Emperor Dutch and Ox. I like that. Yeah, Emperor yeah. Dutch and Ox. He's like, hey guys, I'm Dutch and Ox. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like that. Um, what was your question? Uh, what did I ask you? I asked you, what are some of the ways you're seeing tribal sovereignty become more visible? Or what are some other native narrative uh, stories that you'd like to uplift? I don't think we're at peak oh. indigenous storytelling. There's yeah. people say we're at peak indigenous storytelling because you got all these native shows and native awareness going on. I don't think we're there yet. Like fuck, don't, don't cut ourselves short just yet, yeah. right? But I think that we're at a place where there's a greater access mm -hmm to share our stories, there's a greater audience or more attuned audience 
to listen and to consume and to watch and learn from Native stories. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're really taking advantage of that. I think people are really are well equipped right now. Our content creators, our directors, our filmers, our, our, our filmmakers, our writers are, are, are in a position where, you know, people are willing to hear and, and listen. So I, it's a beautiful moment, I think, overall. We can't ignore the generations of people who have been storytellers, who have been hustling, acting, telling stories, writing, doing poetry, like whatever it may be for generations. We're, we are definitely um, standing on their backs. Hold on, I gotta get this dribble that's coming out. <laughs> um, for, for many years, I was an organizer. I still see myself as an organizer. I worked for an organization called the Indigenous Environmental Network. And one of our big, one of the big campaigns I worked on was against the Dakota Access Pipeline. Mm -hmm. And in that fight, there was a mantra called water is life, right? Everyone remember that water is life. Mini Wachoni, Mini Wachoni, water is life. It was this mantra that brought people in. And it was such a great narrative hook because it is so, it's broad enough that people can connect with it, but also still focused on an issue that we all have, we all should have a right to clean water. Yeah. But it brought in indigenous peoples from the Colorado River Basin, people from the Klamath River Basin. You had people from from the Echo, from the Amazon coming up who were all fighting part of that struggle. But then he also had all these non-natives who had no idea that one, native people still existed. Right. But two, that we're still fighting for our right to say no and to also protect our homelands. What Water is Life, Mini Wachoni allowed us to do is it was almost like an invitation, like, oh, you're here. Mini Wachoni, this is the door right here to our home. Let, let come into our house. Yeah. It was a, it was an entryway. It was a it was a narrative way to get people into our into this world that we inhabit. Mm -hmm. And when they got into our house, they're like, oh, what's this on the wall? Uh, it's treaties. Oh, the floor is made of sovereignty. What is indigenous sovereignty? What is free, prior, and informed consent? Like, it was a way for us to really expand the narrative about what does it mean to be indigenous. And also, what's the current fuckery that's happening in this country when it comes to tribal nations? 100 percent. And the right for us to decide what happens to our territories, our lands, our bodies, our air. Yeah. So that was a huge stepping stepping stone to get to where we're at right now. And I think that we're just it's a beautiful moment to be alive, indigenous. So cheers to some milk right now, because we all know indigenous peoples love milk. Milk. Yep. Okay, so this last question is the spiciest question. Right? <laughs> and it aligns perfectly with our scorpion disco karma sauce. Is it too bold to call you a renaissance man? What? A renaissance man. You are an activist, a writer, what the an fuck you say to me? What would you say to me? <laughs> so a renaissance man, right? You do all this stuff, and the reason why we know you are is because we creeped your Instagram. There was a like, it, and it was 62 weeks ago, <laughs> a post 62 weeks ago, and it was a random like. <laughs> As we try our fifth wing, uh, hang on, I'm trying not to be awkward about it. Let's go maybe down here. Well, cheers, they won't be able to see it. Uh, Wonder Twin Powers activate. Form of chicken wing. It looked like you were a talented baker at one point, but you like to bake pies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what, 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 what pie flavor best represents you? Ooh, strawberry rhubarb. Why? Because I love it. It's just, it's just really good. And if you eat too much rhubarb, mm -hmm. you get an upset stomach. A little too much of me. I'm good in certain quantities, but a little too much, you're like, this guy's really annoying. Okay. I'm s all right. I'm, not, I'm inspecting here. You gotta smell it, dude. All right. Um, I can smell the spice. And before I eat it. What? Oh, you're going to put more? I'm going to do it. Yeah. You are a warrior, my friend. Here we go. A warrior. Here you go. Careful, it, careful. It's, look at oh, That's how deadly it is, is it doesn't even want to come out of the bottle. Like, see that? I it's know, like, fuck it's, you, we don't, I don't want to put your life at risk. It's burning me. Okay, here we go. Holy shit, you're my right, hero. I, you are my hero. If you do that. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, it's hot. See that? It's a little close up. Extra flavoring. Camera three, zoom in. Dude, stop, you're making me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> what can we do as tribal leaders? Oh, to protect our people. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> it's making me cough. All right. Shoot. All right. What are you thinking? How's it hitting you? 
little higher. Found it. It's coming. The horde is at the door. The breaking through. Woo! The orcs are right in the wall, boy. Woo! <laughs> All right, here we go. Maybe if I just keep slowly, like a, li a drip. <laughs> Indigenous people, we've lived off the land, and so we've tried every possible way to survive off the land. You think at some point, some Lakota guy was like, I wonder what buffalo milk tastes like. <laughs> we gotta squeeze it out. I'm just praying, that's all I'm doing. I'm praying for the people. This is not tears from the pain, it's tears of joy for how far we've come as people. <laughs> I'm gonna find. I'm gonna finish this, okay? Okay. And I'm burning. Well, I got another question I, I could think of. So, oftentimes when people see in the street, they want to hear your war hoop. I'm not gonna ask you to war hoop today. What I'm gonna ask you to do is rate my war hoop one to five. So it's either the taco to scorpion. What do we call it? Scorpion disco. So if you're ready, I'm gonna blow up your audio cameras. Three, two, one. Wait, no. One, two. Three. There it is. Okay. One to five? Was that spicy? That's a five. That's a five. That's a solid fucking five. That's a West River Shine River fucking war coop right there, son. Thank you. Dallas, my friend. On behalf of the Native Governance Center, our board of directors, our fine staff, and myself, we want to thank you for joining us for season two of Wings with Wayne. We hope you had a fun time and it was an enthralling conversation. Oh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you. Oh, I hate milk. I hate milk. Madaki, I say. Oh. Open the door. All my relations. This sweat lodge is over. Time to go feast.